Texas, 12 noon Tuesday, April 16th. All members are present, Kurt Joukowsky, Linda Anderson, Steve Riley, and Rhonda Boren. Three items for individual consideration. A, receive a report. Public well, comments. I'm sorry? Public comments. Uh, receive a report, hold a discussion, and take action on approving the minutes from the April 2nd, 2024 meeting. I move we approve the minutes for the April 2nd, 2024 meeting. Second. Got a motion by Kurt Chikowski, second by Linda Anderson. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Items for individual consideration B. Receive a report, hold a discussion, and take action on a request for a certificate of appropriateness to add permanent LED strip lighting around the roof line of 131 West Main Street. Main on March 5th in which we did choose to approve that or you all chose to approve that with some stipulations again this would be permanent LED lighting around the top of four or I'm sorry uh, 131 West Main Street uh, which houses the horses axe it's at the corner of West Main and Austin Avenue so a prominent corner for us with high traffic coming through there uh, the primary color would be uh, clear or white lighting with the ability to change it. So pretty much the same exact case coming before you, just a different location. The, um, the building owner is in discussions um, with Donna um, about how to maintain control of the colors and who has control of those colors. So that's something that they will work out on the side. Uh, again, the stipulation that I would uh, ask you to consider is the 90 days, just like we did just for consistency as we did with 400 West Main. Uh, and then also the Main Street manager is considering um, uh, an estimate for this kind of lighting all up and down uh, Main Street. So that'll be forthcoming as well. We will also then be making amendments as needed to our ordinance to address this uh, because that has not been done uh, within the ordinance you recall it was the sign ordinance that had the lighting but it was holiday lighting and only for 90 days so we'll take care of that as well this is an example um, from other cities the company that would be putting the lighting up is called inception lighting you'll notice grapevine up there i think a few of you have visited to see this lighting and then the historic and current photo the applicant is here as well uh, as i am for any questions no, if you could go back to the picture there, please, sure. Steph. Sam, thanks. Which one? Oh, that, that was good. We advanced to the next one. Next mm -hmm. one. Mary, the stipulations were discussed with the owner already, too? Or? They were not. Oh, okay. I notice he's here. He is here. I'd invite him to the mic then. Okay. <laughs> Need your name and your address? Yeah, Mike Roberts, 131 West Main. So I own the building, the horse's axe is in. Um, it's, it's interesting, the, the, the owner of Inception Lighting, I met a few months ago when he started talking about this. And then when I came to the meeting for um, the Split Windows building, I started a discussion with Donna. I introduced them. Um, so with the control of the color, I would completely turn it over to Donna because if it turns into something that happens on Main Street, I want to be part of the community. I don't want to. I don't want to run rogue. So they, the city, would actually, if if they do this, could have in an app the ability to control all of Main Street with one click, and we would just be a part of that. So I don't want control of the color. I just want. I want the city to decide what color it should be during whatever holiday. So, um, but the Inception lighting. If you go back to the picture before. Um, they have lit up multiple downtowns in the area. I think one of these pictures, I think you said is Grapevine, I think another one of the pictures is Little Elm. So they've got a track record and the way that they install it, they put in molding above, uh, discrete molding and they color match it to the building. So during the daytime, you don't even know it's there. So they do just a really high end lighting system. So it's, 
us what you'd like to do. Any questions for her? Thank you for your commitment to taking part in, we hope, something that could extend down the street. Thank you. I think it would be wonderful. Uh, you know, I was at a, uh, a board meeting back in November, and I'm drawing a blank on which one it was, but the topic came up of, you know, how do we get Christmas lighting all the way up and down Main Street? And the answer was, well, we can't do it this year. <laughs> yeah. we're, we're a month away from Christmas. But if there were, a, if there were something like that, the city could just decide, boom, it's Christmas time. I think it would it would be such an attraction just for downtown. And just people would just want to come down and look at it. And it would really help the businesses that are down here. And even, you know, during the construction, if the tops of the buildings that are lit up during the construction, that, that might be an indicator of, hey, all these businesses are open right now. So um, anyway, I would love to see it happen. Outstanding. I'm just going to talk with Mary here, and um, we are in discussion with Donna for a overall thing for the city, and that's what's going to go into uh, Chapter 30, or is it going to go into some other ordinance? Okay. So if I could frame this, we are seeking a strict bit of appropriateness for uh, the Horses Acts, the same stipulations of white with a holiday opportunity no greater than 90 days. That's, yes. But I worry, is and he's willing to let pretty much the city or the one of the organizations control, you know, what light goes when, you know, comply with the holiday. But what if uh, somebody said, I just really need to have some flashing lights to attract. We have a big weekend come up this weekend and we need it to boom. And if it's the right color. I know that there are some other things now going to be put into place. Because of the construction, it's going to take years to do. But I think this ordinance will then have to address if we're going to do the historic downtown but still trying to match the uh, economic viability that we can wrap that in. But I, I understand your concern. What we're going to approve is just primary white lights, except for the holiday season, which would be, I would be more than glad to add, one color. Yeah. Consistent. Yes. So we are consistent with 400. I mentioned this once before, and it's probably trite and arcane, but one could determine correctly a different holiday to recognize with their business and ergo would have 90 days to do it. And if the, uh, if, if the ordinance or guidelines were placed in that way, then one knows all you have to do is get an international calendar that there is some holiday taking place everywhere every single day. And so then, if our intent, it, if it is specifically holiday season, it must be applied. If I was involved in this, and at some point I would offer these kind of suggestions, I would focus it into the December time period when you can get uh, Kwanzaa, you can get Festivus if you're so inclined, you can get uh, Christian Christmas, you can get uh, the Jewish uh, ho high holidays, and uh, I would recommend a specific time period. Very and much this thing that I'm talking about coming is the potential to branch off of holiday lights and have the downtown lights vertically, not just horizontally. But that's all to come. One could also have provisionally special events. For instance, we might want to light the street for a festival like Day of the Dead and the lighting mm -hmm. needs to be the colors of the Mexican flag. So there could be specific holidays or at events that might be included, and those would be determined upon, I would think, individually by this group. But I believe it's short-sighted to write guidelines or ordinances that define, that are not more expansive in how holiday is defined or more precise if we want to say, okay, we're going to define holiday 
for Main Street as commencing on X and ending on X. But we will approach it again and again if it's not specific, I feel. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Brown. Just to say, no? Okay. Thank you, Michael. So right now we have to approve it based on how the ordinance is written exactly. currently, right? So it says holiday. We, that is, we know that a lot of the ordinances are left up for interpretation, right? So when we go back to do the sign ordinance and make amendments there, things have to be specified. And when we go back to do the historic preservation ordinance amendments, after we've had it in place for a little while, we know there are some things we need to tweak, then we have to specify and define again. So that will be determined. Yeah, I think soon. you're exactly right. But I think right now we have to go based off of what we have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think, while I'm glad we are a judiciary body, I suspect that uh, city management, especially after the election, may want to have a, a word in a city manager. And, and so all that is going to have to be about. But for today, I would say we would focus on white lights with the potential for a holiday season, just like we did for 400. So in essence, we would frame the motion as it was before. Exactly. Exactly. Any more discussion, questions? Do I have a motion? I move to approve the request for a certificate of appropriateness to add permanent LED strip lightings around the roof line of 131 Main Street to be predominantly white with the potential for different colors and to be determined by future ordinance uh, amendments. Second. I have a motion by Kurt Chikowski, a second by Linda Anderson. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Moving on to item C, receive a report, hold a discussion, and take action on a request for a certificate of appropriateness for the placement of a fire escape ladder at 114 North Houston Street. Thank you. 114 North Houston Street is what we know as the peanut factory uh, because of its historic use as a peanut factory. It has been vacant, uh, from what I understand, over 20 years. Tony Kai said it was vacant when he started here. So uh, I didn't think it had been quite that long, but it has been. So um, this building no longer holds its uh, historical significance uh, in the way that it would have uh, the last time it was deemed as a contributing structure, which was in 1983. The last two historic resource surveys state that it is not contributing. So. The addition of the ladder that we're going to discuss uh, has no implications on that integrity. You will see uh, the image to the right uh, has a little ladder placed on there. I think thanks to Grant, uh, he helps me with these slides and Sam, or Sam did it. Uh, that is the approximate location of the ladder on the north elevation towards the rear. So it'll be placed three feet off the rear of the building uh, facing the north direction. Now the, uh, it's not going to be flat, right? You have to have that cage around it. And this is to meet all of the egress and safety code viol or not violations, requirements that they need to have for proper egress. Uh, currently right now, from what I understand, there's a hatch somewhere in the roof and then you have to place a ladder to get up or in the ceiling to get up to the roof. And that's just not, that's not going to work for code purposes. and. Um, they need to be able to get up there for maintenance and everything like that. So this ladder will be uh, custom made out of steel and will be um, have to meet the specifications of the fire marshal and the building official. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just picturing, why don't you just give them a rope? We could just <laughs> launch them up there, you know? Yeah. So um, this uh, meets everything that the building official and the fire marshal would require and then the applicant is present for any questions. No, I'm glad to see the fire personnel in the back shaking his head north-south. Um, <laughs> I hope this is indicative that perhaps there'll be a renewal of the building. Uh, it has some tremendous, you come Thursday night, you can hear all about that at the uh, Doc Holiday Roadshow. Um, you might not like the story of before it was the building. Um, but I, I, to me, it just makes obvious sense. 
I have a question about the function of the parking lot adjacent. Is that going to remain a parking lot for the building? As far as I know, to the left. To the north? Mm -hmm. To the north, yes, to the left of the photo, yeah. That will be a parking lot. I have not seen any plans come through, so I cannot speak to it. anything with future use or things like that. I'm not privy to that, but. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any questions for the applicant? Unless they would like to say anything. Or you can quit while you're ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's just not. I'm going to talk. <laughs> no, I want to offer the opportunity. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Jonathan Farrell, 5102 Point Oaks Court, Jensen. Um, the owner of this building has come forward to us, Cam, uh, and, and with an intended purpose of doing some remodeling. We're not too you know, sure what that's going to be, essentially. However, uh, just looking at the building initially with him, So part of our uh, intent here is to start with a preliminary ladder system to gain access to the roof, obviously, whether that be for HVAC systems or and or roof replacements, which are going to have to happen soon, uh, just given our initial inspection. And then, uh, you know, additionally, we were going to be, he wants to close in the ceiling system inside the house. It's all open trusses and inside the uh, building. So with that, there is a scuttle access and by closing up the ceiling, we would be sealing up that scuttle access, and then in turn just uh, making that one option for the fire egress uh, and maintenance access. My question to you and the fire marshal would be, uh, do we need to put some sort of uh, locked gate or hatch on the bottom of this uh, ladder system for safety purposes? I'm looking back at the fire marshal. I think that's required. Of yes. Yeah. I'll let you if talk you with him. You're going to have a lot of guests. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I owe him some information. Sorry I'll let you talk with him and work that part out. Uh, that is everything I have. Thank you. Love you, sure. Thanks for service. Yeah, there's no windows access to it there yet. Mm -hmm. okay. But they don't know if they're going to do the building yet. So that there may be changes. This is just for right now. For right now, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I, I think there'll be even more. <laughs> I'm sure there'll be more as they decide. <laughs> okay, any other questions or further discussion? If not, can I get a motion, please? I move to approve the request for a certificate of appropriateness for the placement of fire escape ladder 114 North Houston Street per the fire marshal's recommendations in addition if needed. Second. second. Okay, we have a motion by Rhonda Bohr and a second by Linda Anderson. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. I commend the staff also for going through the mm -hmm. little sentence blurb there about non uh, uh, contributing and then talking yes. about the exterior. That was very nice. Okay. Moving on to staff updates. <clears throat> Administratively approved um, applications that came through for this round. I do have them to sign, and so I'll put those on the next uh, agenda. But just so you know, there were a few for signage um, that came through. That's all. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, that's going to be it, folks. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Okay. I'll second that. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Two All in favor. <laughs> All in favor. Aye. Twelve nineteen. Thank you.